The Principle of Hope by Ernst Bloch. Um, Volume 1, Chapter 4. Hiding Place in Beautiful Foreign Lands. By Ourselves. Here, too, the fun of being invisible ourselves. We seek out a corner. It protects and conceals. It feels good in a narrow space, but we know we can do what we want there. A woman relates, I wished I could be under the cupboard. I wanted to live there and play with the dog. A man relates, As boys, we built ourselves a platform between the branches which could not be seen from below. When we were sitting up there, when we pulled up the ladder and cut ourselves off completely from the ground, then we felt perfectly happy. Our own room is prefigured here, the free life that is coming. At home, already on our way. The hidden boy is also breaking out, in a shy way. He is searching for what is far away, even though he shuts himself in. It is just that in breaking free, he has girded himself round and round with walls. All the better if the hiding place is mobile, that is, if it consists of living material. In other words, of outlawed or strange people with whom we go along, amongst whom we are not suspected. Schoolboys do not always drop everything in an effort to please their parents and teachers. The parents and teachers can be relied upon to put a damper on things. Suffering at school can be nastier than any other later form of suffering, except that of the prisoner. Hence the wish to break out, shared by the prisoner. Because outside is still indistinct, it becomes a place of wonder. A woman relates, As a girl, I always wished that burglars would come. I wanted to show them everything, silver, cash, linen. They could take anything they wanted, even me, for their trouble. A man relates, When I heard the bagpipes for the first time, I ran after them as I did after everything peculiar. But I did not turn back after a little while, as I usually did when other curiosities came along the street, the knife grinder, the Salvation Army, and so on. Instead, I followed out of the city along the country road into the villages that I knew, into the villages that I did not know. It wasn't only the fantastic man who drew me away. The whistling spirit enticed me, which I believed lived in the bagpipes, and in the end I became this myself. Thus at seven or eight, the narrow space expands, the strangest things take place inside it, when the ladder is pulled up. But it is really only the hiding place which seeks to be transposed here. The boy inside it only breaks free invisibly with his friends, carries himself on his snorting steed, with a fluttering feather into the security of the adventure. The night is full of taverns and castles. In each one there are furs, weapons, roaring fires, men like trees, no clocks. Drawings on blotting paper and exercise books also seem characteristic of the sprinkled pleasure in hiding places at this time. A spiky security is committed to paper, a house, a town, a coastal fortress bristling with cannon, There are islands offshore. They deter the enemy from sea attack. Inland, there are three rings of forts. They guard the road, the only one which leads to the dream fortress, and it is mined. Thus, the coastal town lies out of sight of school and home, inaccessible, with eyes that seem to slumber. And yet, the fortress was not simply drawn as being impregnable, but also as being powerful, radiant. Its effect carries beyond the edge of the paper into the unknown. Our own life was protected and rimmed by battlements high above, but these could be climbed at any time to look out. Even later on, this combination of narrowness and beautiful foreign lands does not disappear. In other words, from this time the wishful land is an island.